we're gonna have some fun with markers and I'm gonna show you how you can use markers to blend different shades and get different kinds of reflections and so on with using not too many markers we're not gonna use a bunch of them because uh, I think not a lot of people have a bunch of markers we might have a uh, few of them so that's what we're gonna focus on so I'm gonna start with showing you the difference between marker paper which we have here and why I personally actually prefer cheap printing paper to sketch on this is the marker paper and let's just start by adding some markers onto this paper so we're gonna start with a YR09 right here and let's just make some lines okay now if you want to go over this one more time with a different marker it starts to get it gets a bit messy because if you go over them too many times on marker paper you're gonna have these weird edges popping up and it's not gonna look good it's gonna get more difficult to adjust your uh, your shading because you have these ridges by uh, the end of the brush and here we can see that it starts to to mess up the lines and you get these weird shades here that you really don't want in a sketch especially if you're doing some if you want to have full control over your shading and that always happens with marker paper for some reason I think uh, the main the difference between marker paper is that it's so smooth and the, I don't I don't think the uh, the marker sticks as well to marker paper as it does to regular printing paper. Paper, and the reason for that is because we don't want the the marker to be able to bleed through marker paper. So it has to have some sort of resistance uh, for picking up the marker, the marker ink, and that in some cases can create these strange lines here if you go over the marker or if you go over the, the the paper with several markers at the same spot so if we go to a regular printing paper here and we do the same thing we're gonna have a different result so I'm gonna start with the same marker that I used and this is by the way the cheapest marker paper you can find so it's nothing fancy at all and uh, it's going to bleed through but that's totally fine the reason it's fine because we're not gonna get those weird lines no matter how many times we go over this paper you see we still get some smooth gradients and we have full control over our over our sketch here and yes it is going to bleed through if we look at the other piece of paper that's underneath here we're gonna have some bleed through but that's fine just keep a a uh, paper a sheet of paper underneath every sketch that you do and you'll be all set to go so that's what I want to show you uh, the difference with your marker paper and regular paper so for this class I'm going to use the regular paper because yeah that's what I like the most so what we're gonna start with is we're gonna create a basic shading using markers and I'm gonna show you how you can do that using starting with just one single marker so we're gonna start with this one which is an E07 let's make a square like this let's say that we, we only have <coughs> excuse me we only have one single marker to play around with so we need to make at least two or three different shades with this I'm gonna start by filling in the first layer and as you can see I'm going quite fast from side to side here and that is because I don't I want to be I want to get the lightest shade I can get out of this marker and uh, to do that you utilize the speed so the faster you go the less ink has time to to come down on the paper and the, the lighter the shade so if we do this the first time we go around and we only have one marker then we have the option to add another layer and control the shading that way so let's say that we want to make this a 3d cube now so the light is coming from here and we only have this marker what we can do is we can start by 
adding the line here, or we're going to add a, a chamfer to this to this uh, cube or rectangle. And then we want to add one shade right here, like that. And we want the bottom part, this shade right here, to be the darkest part. And the thing is, most people have a big pen at home. And I'm going to show you how you can use that now to add even, even a darker shade to this bottom part right here. But as you can see, we only used one marker and we kind of got three different results here. Depending on how many times you choose to go over the paper with the same marker and also the speed that you go over the paper. The, the slower you go over, the more ink will come down on the paper and the darker the shade. Now if you're not happy with this and you want to add some more shade to this, all you have to do is grab your pen. I'm just going to fill in the uh, the lines here just to have some definition on this rectangle. So let's say we want this to be the darker part. So what we can do is just go over it light, very light with the pen and make some line shading like this. Because that will make this part just a bit darker than if we haven't used the pen on it. And we're now clearly going to have surface number one, surface number two, and then down here is surface number three with three completely different shades of red using one single marker. Now let's say that you have three different, different shades of red to play around with. Uh, well, that gives us, <laughs> that makes the whole thing a bit easier. So let's make this cube again here. This time we're going to start with it in perspective already. Something like this. It doesn't have to be perfect. So we have the, the light coming from here. And we have surface number one, surface number two, and surface number three. So this is going to be the lightest. This is in between. And this right here is going to be the darker shade. What we want to do is to start with the lightest shade of the, sh the color that we choose and go over the entire sketch or shape first. So I want to go semi fast here from side to side. And it doesn't matter if you don't hit the edge exactly uh, at the point because we're going to fill that in later anyway, so it's not a big deal. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that in a second. First of all, let's cover the whole cube with the first, the, the lightest shade of red that we have available, or whatever color you choose to do. So I just filled in this line here with one single stroke now, and that made this whole thing look, look clean, nice and clean. So I want to go over this surface number three as well. There we go. So we have our, this is more like orange. Well, that's fine because orange is basically a lighter <laughs> shade of red. So what we want to do now is continue. We want to keep number one at this shade because it's going to be the lightest shade. So we don't want to do a lot with surface number one. We're going to go into, let's see, which one do you think is lighter in this case. I think this one right here. So we're going to do R37 or 35 and see what happens when we use that marker. That's perfect. It gives us just a bit of a darker shade here on surface number two. So I'm going over that surface one more time. And that looks great. And now I'm going to take the, the darker shade of red, which is light mahogany here, and go over surface number three. And that seems to be fine too. Seems to work out great. So what you want to do, you want to start with, always start with the lightest shade of the color that you're 
sketching with and go over the entire shade and if you want to add highlights later on you can do that with for example if you have one of these pens it's a uh, white ink pen this is kind of thick I have a lighter one right here which is called a uni Posca pen and these two I can show you what these two does what what these two do so this one gives a thick white outline like this I think you need to shake it a bit before you start something like this so you can add highlights wherever you want this one is for all the details and this one you definitely need to shake before you go crazy with it so it gives a really clear white highlight and I love this pen for highlights if and that's of course if you're sketching a glossy surface if you have a matte surface uh, this doesn't really matter but anyway it looks really good when you add it on here and maybe you want to add something down here as well on this edge so that's the basics of sketching or shading with markers and of course if you want to add some weight to this so that it doesn't look like these two things are floating in mid-air what we want to do is add a black outline to at least at least the uh, the bottom the baseline which is this line down here and the baseline is the line the edge that is facing down towards the ground which are those lines right there and if you want you can add it all around and see if you like that better so you can go all around here and do the same thing with this one why not so let's add a line right here and at this surface number three needs a black line as well there we go we have our renders with one marker and this was when you have available three markers off same color that's the difference so you can still use one marker and get a you, you can still you know get some cool results by just using very few markers so if I add even highlights on this and I use the big pen then I can add even more contrast by adding completely white highlights and m make it even black with the big pen here down here if I want to, to do that Thank you so much for checking out this video. The videos I post here on YouTube only touch the surface of design sketching. And if you want to go really deep and learn all the details and the tools you use, what paper to use, ellipse training and line quality and all of that, then you might want to check out my courses that you can find on the sketchmonkey.com. And if you use the links that are on my site, you get a massive discount to any course that you want. So you can go and check out what course you want to join and click on the link and you get a discount automatically. I hope to see you there and thank you again so much for checking out this video. My name is Maran Bambli and I will see you next time.